I'll do my best to go through this. So 33 states f of x equals 3x squared. What else? Three x to the fourth. Three x to the third minus twelve x squared plus three x. Okay, that's right. Very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we need to find, we need to determine the m behavior multiplicity of each one of our zeros, right? So the first thing we do is let's get m behavior out of the way. When I'm doing m behavior, I look for the degree and the leading coefficient because I'm going to apply the leading coefficient test. Right, that we wrote down in our notes, the equal to test. So I write down the degree. Degree is going to be your highest exponent, remember. So my degree is going to be 3. Make sure it's in descending order if it's not already to make sure you can determine your degree. Then I find my leading coefficient, which is my coefficient of my leading term, which is 3. Now, what we're concerned about is our degree. Is it even or odd? That's going to tell us the end behavior. And then, is our leading coefficient positive or negative? Since my, leading, since my degree is odd and my leading coefficient is positive, my graph is going to fall left and rise right. That's on the leading coefficient test. All right? So now the next thing we need to do is determine the intercepts. Remember, the intercepts are where the graph crosses. So if I had f of x at x, where my graph crosses f of x equals 0. We have to remember that. f of x equals 0. So I'm going to set my function equal to 0. Alright, and we've talked about a couple ways. I'm obviously not going to do graphing um, for this video, but we've talked about ways that we can solve, um, solve so far. That was looking at quadratic formula, uh, completing the square, and factoring. So first of all, this is to a this is a third degree polynomial. So right now I can't use my quadratic formula or um, or my completing the square. So I'm going to look into factoring. When we look at factoring, first of all, remember the main important thing: always see what can you factor out first. What do these? What common terms do these have? And you guys hopefully can see that these all have a common term term of x. So I'm going to factor out an x. Actually, I can factor out a three x, right? Yeah. Get a little ahead of myself. So let's factor out a 3x. So I'm left with uh, x squared minus 4x plus 1. All right. Now we look at this and we say, okay, now I have pretty much my 2, 0 that I can multiply. So now what I'm going to do is I need to say, can I use the zero product property? So I'll set these up so I have a product so I can say x equals 0. It's really 3x equals 0. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once you divide by 3 on both sides, you get x equals 0. Okay? So x is equal to 0. Then you have x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Well, again, we got to do more. We got to still factor this more. So we look at this and what are our possible ways again? Now it's a quadratic. We can use quadratic formula. We can use completing the square. Um, and I can't factor it because there's no two numbers that multiply to give you 1 that add to give you 4, right? So for this example, I'm going to use uh, the. I'll use the quadratic formula because we've been doing the completed square a lot. So let's use quadratic formula. Quadratic formula, remember, is opposite b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So opposite of b is going to be a positive 4. Positive 4 plus or minus negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1. I don't know why I'm a times c, which again is 1, all divided by 2 times 1. So then what we're going to have here is I'm going to have 16 minus 4, which is 12, and this equals, you know, so I have 4 plus or minus negative 4 squared is 16, 4 times 1 times 1 is 4, so I have 16 minus 4, which is square root of 12, divided by 2. I can reduce the square root of 12 into 2 radical 3, right? So I have 4 plus or minus 2 radical 3 all divided by 2 equals 0. And then what I end up coming up with when I divide my 2 into both of those, I have x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. 
okay? So those are gonna be my two zeros as I simple that out. Now to determine the multiplicity, remember our multiplicity is gonna, is, um, gonna tell us if my graph is going to touch it or going to go straight through. Since both of these factors are unique and this factor is also unique, I'm all gonna have a multiplicity of one. Okay. So that's how we're doing the multiplicity for this one. It's not the best one I want to do to describe multiplicity for some of you, but you can see that each one of these zeros is unique, so we're going to have a multiplicity of one. And that's it. With Then we have our right, fall left, rise right, and that's it for tomorrow. Any questions? Good. No? Okay. Um, what do you mean by unique? Two plus square root of three and two minus square root of three are not the same, right? They're unique.